So this is just a quick discussion video. Basically, I want to fill in new subscribers and maybe refresh some of the old subscribers. And I just want to say you guys rock. Thank you all so much. This None of this would be possible without you all. And I finally got my first AdSense payment. And with that, I ordered something special I think you guys are going to want to see. So I'll talk about that at the end of the video and let you know what that is. But first, let's talk about these. So these are my SAX24 and my 6x6 Barrage builds. So basically, I want to go over them and tell you what I've done, talk about them a little bit for people that don't know. So if you go back a little bit, this was pretty recent. I built a 6x6 out of an ECX barrage that Mrs. Rabbit kindly donated. And the leftover parts from my RGT V2, which most of went to this build. So what I did here is this is the original model body I put on my first deadbolt I got back when they first come out. And then here... If you want to do this, it takes two axles, and basically you piece them together to put the inside where the drive shaft would go on both sides. Once you do that, you have a pass-through, and you can see how it works. You have to flip the diff in here, so you get rid of them two little pegs in there that keep you from doing that, and you have to do that on one side here, too. But once you get all that worked out and the drive lines cut, works perfect you can see I've got plenty of flex plenty of movement I did have to drill out these holes in the uh, links here a little bit so that these screws would go through and it kind of pinches it between the uh, punk in there and that seems to be working just fine the issue is every time I drive it right now this drive shaft pops apart because it can't handle that much so until I get a metal drive shaft this has been put on hold but for now, when I was testing it, I had the stock RGT ESC on it. And this is a ECX Temper Gen 1 motor. I modified the spur cover with the original motor mount from the Temper to make it work on here. Not sure how well you can see it, but it's cut. And that is a drilled out ECX barrage pinion on the motor there. And it works great. I haven't had any issues other than that drive shaft so far and unfortunately I had to rob a few things off it for this build like the tires and the magnet that was here. But that's the gist of that one. Other than that really it's pretty much stock. I did modify the servo mount. I forgot to mention that because normally the servo would be sitting here and I glued it to the bumper mount so that it's sitting like that. It is running Charisma Springs in the back too, so they're a lot softer than what's on the front. Now for the deadbolt, I've done quite a bit to it too. So it's been lengthened. And if you look here, the batteries have been lowered. This is a different ESC tray. So to lower the stock battery tray, basically you cut these little feet off and then the two corners here will slide right between the chassis rails and you can take a hot paper clip or a little drill bit whatever you got and make it so you can screw it in right there and then them short feet I trimmed to the appropriate height and glued them on right here so that makes a nice uh, uh, low center of gravity battery tray these are kinetic boulder bars I believe he calls them kinetic double barrel shock so you got lots of flex and that's with it lowered and everything and you can see it sits nice and low it's not lifted or anything but I could have it jacked way up like that if I wanted so transmission flip I did that when I first got it and it's got a barrage motor this ESC tray is a C10 or Jeep ESC tray. It basically lowers the ESC and moves the shocks quite a bit further forward to line up with the length in the front end. This is a Emacs analog servo donated by Mrs. Rabbit. Uh, HR diff covers, HR knuckles, kinetic KMS uh, millstone wideners and overweights 
RC four wheel drive Baja claw tires, kinetic KMS wheels. These are aluminum bead locks. What else? Uh, uh, what were the C10 body posts? Or these might be the stock deadbolt body posts. I can't remember. That was a while ago. I'm pretty sure that they're, they're the deadbolt ones. And then in the back here, I flipped this uh, hinge mount here so that it moved the body forward just a little bit. For the front end, that's an HR bash plate or skid, whatever you want to call it. And it does help with sliding over stuff because it gets rid of that bump under the tranny. As for the front end here, this is a Bangear four link servo mount. And to do the four link, basically you need some wire housing and that goes around the screws here to fill in the space on the links. That way you can see it doesn't flop around or anything. And then up front you need two ball studs. And those are what's on the shocks. So if you've upgraded your shocks, you should have a couple in the old shocks. Or you might have to buy some shocks. I'm not sure what size these ball ends are. I haven't found anyone that knows yet. And I don't have a caliper to measure. So, yeah, you need that. And these links here are the shorter of the four links they include with it. And I use those on the bottom. And these links are actually the original lower links. And that brought the front end out just enough. I had to get rid of my bumper mount. But I plan to extend the chassis and make that work. You can see my servo and everything clears just fine. And yeah, I mean, other than that, I've modified the body. This is an old turkey pan that I cut and made a roof out of it. And then, obviously, I cut my cage here. That's basically it, really, for this one. Quite a bit's been done to that, and that's a little beast. Now for this build, this is by far my favorite because it handles just like a trail finder too. So basically, this is the most recent, so I'm sure you've seen it, but I'm going to go over it in a little better detail. In the back here, I've got my Orlando Hunter 260 milliamp battery. And then I've got the stock ESC. And if you can see it, there's a coating of something on it. What that is, is clear nail polish. As an experiment, I wanted to try waterproofing it with it, and so far it's held up like rain and stuff. I haven't submerged it, though. And this is just a piece of styrene with some Gorilla Tape for hinges. The magnets that I stole from the uh, 6x6 build here are what holds it down. As for the body, to mount a hard body, this seems to work best. And I mean, you can see it ain't coming off there easily. And that is these neodymium magnets. These work great on stock too because the hole in them is the perfect size for these. I'm not sure where they come from because my buddy gave me these. So I'll have to ask him next time I see him. Maybe he can tell me and then I'll fill you guys in then. Basically, this they're super glued down. I'm sure that won't hold forever. It never does with magnets. Next will be shoe goo. And then... As the beginnings of this build, if you go back, I took my SEX24 C10 and my RGT V2 and combined the two. So I have a transfer case, I have the forward mount motor, and a chassis mounted servo. So that's pretty awesome, and that gave me just enough room to clear the interior and everything. I still have to do a little trimming. And that's because this is rubbing on the interior. You can see it right here. You can also see where my magnets are. These are held on with shoe goo, and then there's tape under them so that I could adjust where they were. And that way I could get the body lined up. As for the lights, as I was putting the body together, I had to keep this in mind where I wanted to run the wires and everything. So I had to get them squeezed up in there. Everything's hot glued in. And the gap here is actually due to the wire being there and it was like a perfect gap so yeah that's basically the gist of this i still like i said i'm gonna have to file or cut this out so that that drive line clears 
Now, if you have an RGT V2 and you want to know how to put SEX24 axles under it, well, I had to make all custom links, and then I had to actually bend this link because it actually hits the transmission right there. I'm not sure how well that comes out on camera. But yeah, so this doesn't sit completely bottomed out. If you can see right there, the shock isn't bottomed out. I can actually go down a little bit more, but it's pretty close. That's about as close as I could get the thing. As for the shocks, it's running Triel, or not Triel, uh, Triel Hard Springs on Charisma shocks. These are oil-filled shocks. I also have the Triel lowers here. But the stock ones here, because the trio ones were just wide enough, they were hitting the knuckle, and I didn't like that. So yeah, it's also been widened just a little bit with the uh, millstone spacers that come with the wideners. And that is so the shocks don't bind and it works right. So yeah, although it was limited on the C10 body, because it's lighter, with this body, I've got almost my full flex. Let's see. So, that's pretty dang good. Plenty for this build. I am going to experiment with different shocks, though. I have, or not different shocks, but different springs. I have the springs that come with these shocks here. And those are a lot longer, but they're basically the same as the stock springs. And I'm going to try that on here. Hopefully, it'll sit nice and drooped and do well. Right now, the hard springs are perfect because it doesn't lean and it doesn't bounce around as much. You can see for a hard body, it can lean pretty good. And that's without weight in the wheels. So yeah, if you're curious what tires these are, these are RGT V2 tires. I think they come in all the RGTs, and they also come on the Element Enduro 24. As for my axles, these are Trio axles, Trio brass diff covers, Trio knuckles, and yeah that's basically it for the trio on here the links if i remember right this is two millimeter threaded rod stock link ends you just cut the link end off there'll be a line on the link if you look close and then drill it out with a small drill bit around two millimeters same as the rod and then adjust your wheelbase so it's all right and this is three millimeter brass tubing after i had the wheelbase set you cut the tubing to match and just put it all together and fine tune it from there. I still have to do the rear. I don't have the shock towers mounted all the way. There's no screw right here. So yeah, this is very much still an experiment. And so far it's turning out great. I love the thing. Definitely the funnest one to drive. Sorry about all the rambling everyone. But finally let's get to what you want to hear. So since I got my first AdSense payment this month. I decided to go down to Hobby Town and prepay for an Axial SCX24 B17 Betty. So as soon as Hobby Town gets the B17s, I'll have one and I'll unbox it for you guys and we'll put that thing to the test and see what it'll do. I'm not afraid to scratch it up even though it is a limited edition, but it should be something really cool to check out. And I want to say thanks again to everyone who's subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, it says 80% of you or so haven't. Feel free to do it. It's free. And it definitely helps the channel out a lot. So, as I always say, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you know whenever I post. I'll talk to you all in the next one. TTFN. Mm -hmm.